Let's get into Corey Davis at number 19. Oh, yeah, that requires a fresh pop. Fresh. Give me a nice freshy. Old Corey Davis. He's fresh. He is fresh. Fresh off a of birthday. He's a birthday boy. Happy freaking birthday. They say it's your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Corey Davis turns the ripe old age of 23 today. Yeah. January 11th, 2018. Happy birthday, buddy. Happy birthday. Old Corey Davis. He's kind of like that prototype prospect that everyone wants. And, you know, maybe some people are down on him right now. Should I go get, put on my birthday suit? <laughs> no, please no? don't put on okay. your birthday suit. All right. Sorry. You save that. Yeah. <laughs> For my birthday. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Got to cut you off. No, no, I just you're good. Get that in I there. mean, I, I, maybe, maybe there I've, I've seems like there is some people who are down on Corey Davis. And maybe some of those people draft him. So maybe send out some stuff on some feelers for him. But I do think overall Corey Davis has retained his value and I will probably continue to retain his value even if he doesn't absolutely crush this year. So part of the reason why I'm pretty comfortable with having him here. Um, but then, you know, going back and watching kind of what happened when he was out there and playing at least game one when he seemed like maybe he was the freshest he had been. And then near the end of the season, I thought he looked good against Rams week 16. But in between there, there was all sorts of things that kind of went down, starting with the off season. Right. Yeah. He's dealt with a bunch of injuries. He he had ankle. He had a high ankle sprain, a severe high ankle sprain. Which kept him out of the combine, basically. Right. He had surgery on it in January. He is said to have two torn ligaments in that angle, ankle. So that, that wasn't good. He didn't come. He didn't. Uh, obviously, he didn't go to the combine and he didn't show up for the pro day he skipped that all together so there was like no metrics to base any of your opinions on for him other than tape <laughs> which if you actually watch the tape it's ridiculous you need a hero <laughs> right <laughs> um so he had that ankle injury he, he gets drafted still fourth overall i think it was top, you know he was the first wide receiver off the board in the first round that ankle injury didn't deter the titans from taking him uh, then he, he injured his hamstring in August, early August. The MRI came up negative, but he missed pretty much all of training camp. Same hamstring as the ankle? I don't know. They don't usually tell you which one it is because maybe they don't want you to know so that the other team can't could go after it. Could have been overcompensating it, for the ankle injury. It could have definitely been a compensation thing. I know. Um, after I came back from, from an ACL, like I had some hamstring issues and, and some calf issues just because you're, you're trying to, you know, Make sure you don't hurt that thing. Right. So he missed all of training camp, and he didn't play at all in the preseason. Um, he played like one and a half games to start the year before re-aggravating that injury in the third quarter of week two. He misses five more weeks plus the bye, and then returns in week nine. Um, but I, I want to take it back to that week one game that he had. Yeah, and before because, you go there. Yeah, go ahead. I want to I wanna just give, give Big Co another shout-out here that, again, he would be – he would probably be – Giving you a good harping on how, you know, you don't you don't get any time with your number one. Marcus is a young quarterback. Number two, they they have had no time to build up any sort of rapport whatsoever. Whatsoever, no timing, no you know figuring out all the little nuances to Corey Davis's game and all that kind of stuff. So, and he even signed his rookie contract a little bit late. I think it was like a day into training camp or something. So he didn't even you know it wasn't like he was there early and was the first one to sign. Like right. he was behind the eight ball due to injury and and all that for his whole offseason and yeah. all of the preseason. So comes in to week one, and he's like running all these different routes from all these different spots in the field. Just it's looking crazy. like a stallion. The first pass he catches, it's a it's a go route, and he's got all this space to the, to the sideline, and he kind of leans inside and then breaks it outside, and Marcus throws him a nice ball, and he goes up and towers over it, towers over the defender and makes the catch. Um so right off the rip, you see his size and speed coming into play down the field. Uh, the next target, it's a crossing route. So they get him involved on a shallow cross. He doesn't convert the third down. It was pretty good defense on that particular play. But it's you against see the Raiders, him, right? Right. Yeah. Raiders weak weak secondary, weak defense. Other than yeah. you know Mac crushing it. So maybe David Amerson had him most of that game. He did, and he was he was working him. Um, next catch, it's a double move that ultimately ends in a comeback route, but he fakes the corner route just for like a few steps at the top of his route. He gets the defender all turned around before, before he makes his break back inside and like the defender's nowhere near him to, to defend the ball and right. he makes a nice catch. 11 yards, first down. Uh, the next, the next catch, he's lined up in the slot. 
right? So you're like, okay, now they're, they're moving him all over the place. He runs that Julian Edelman whip route where he gives him a little hesitation move off the, off the release, and then he kind of presses into the defender to, to gain that leverage, breaks the route inside like it's a short in, and then he breaks it back outside, and by that time, he's gotten several yards of separation, and he takes, he takes a short catch and turns it into another 11-yard gain. Right. With most of that damage coming after the catch. So where's this out of the slot or the That's out of the slot. Right. right. So he's already shown you the kind of the drag across he showed on, me on some short yardage stuff. So that that's another reason, you know, he 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 set you up for that kind of that body lean and that like he sh- set you up for that little inside drag there and then boom. Yep. Crush that little whip. It's great good, great looking route. Yep. And then and then at the next target, he runs a curl route. Um and Marcus Maria throws throws the ball outside and so he 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 breaks inside the ball's thrown outside so then you see that that lack of connection like they weren't on the same page right. there that's that's a little bit of that on, rustiness but. right you don't know if it's on marcus or if it's on him sure it's probably on him um but you know what we know about this dude coming out of college is that he has massive hands long arms vertical speed and he's nasty after the catch and then in his first game action ever with no preseason or any offseason really to speak of you see him win vertically you see him win over the middle out of the slot he's got the comeback route working he's he's you know working off that vertical threat you see him creating yards after the catch right and it's like everything you wanted to see he showed you right there in week one and he had no practice to even get to that point and he just that prototypical 6'3", 210 pound WR1 is just it's just yeah. laid out there well, in front of you. The the thing like the crazy thing is is like there is a lot of rookies who come into this league who a without any of that training camp or preseason or any of that they 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 don't even have that route tree right. in their arsenal to begin with. And he's and, had and that to, back to college, right? And to know? know that and to and to be able to execute like that is is I think super unbelievable. Impressive. Right. This is a really, really humble dude who's who's ext- uh, seems to be extremely smart and and diligent with with his time and his efforts. He's, he's thirty one on the Wonderlick. Yeah. Well, you gotta smart, love that smart you guy. Gotta love that. And it doesn't necessarily really mean anything, right. but right. You know, Fat, that, Fitzpatrick's just, seem, really smart. Seems like something that you know he he absorbs things like a sponge and and adjusts very quickly. Um. So some of the things that I picked up, just I, all those kind of same things. I, I rewatched most of the games as well. Um, I, I, but I, I, my big thing was takeaway was interviews and, and just listening to him speak. He's very well-spoken, yeah. uh, very humble guy. Uh, and just, you know, his biggest thing was like, you know, I just, I just want to be able to pick up, pick my game speed up, get faster and, and adjust to the speed of the NFL, you know, as well as I can. And, and I, I thought week one looked really good and then he probably wasn't really super healthy and he came back week nine, 10 and it wasn't that impressive. But by the end could, of the year, he, he looked a little sluggish. You know, you watch him week 10 against the Bengals where he had 10 targets and he was I think he caught four of them for 30 something yards or something. And, and, and like he just looked a little sluggish, you right. know? which he is looked, to be expected. This is a rookie and a guy who hadn't, you know, he's coming back off. Of, that's a pretty serious injury all hamstr- around. Yeah, yeah. He pulled his hamstring. And that's what that's what gets you by on, on these explosions, you know? Right. Um. So I. I I think uh, I think I'm I'm pretty much everything I needed to see from Corey Davis. I kind of saw from him. Obviously, getting back into kind of the Marcus Mariota thing, he's still super young, still still you know learning, still figuring things out. Um, you, he kind of took a step back a little bit this year. Absolutely, you, you had a you had a guy who last year was extremely efficient in the red zone. Um, didn't didn't throw any interceptions. I still don't think he threw. Any interceptions? I don't think this year? so because they've still they still try to jinx him every time he gets in the red zone. They're like but he's never throwing a red zone interception. He threw a ton of touchdown passes in, in a tight window last year, which was one of the most imp- in the tight. You know, once that field tightens up, usually the younger guys struggle in that area, and he right. he excelled in that area. Um, but this year he comes with thirteen or more interceptions and touchdowns this year. Fifteen picks and thirteen touchdowns, or something along those lines, which you know, which is a little bit of a of a step back. And and you saw a great year two from him, year three, which is where you hope to see a huge improvement. For whatever reason, it just wasn't quite all there. I don't know how healthy was Mariota really was all season. He's a tough guy. He's also a leader, really smart guy. I would like to see. Obviously, a, you know, they won this playoff game last week, and you were kind of hoping that. 
not that I want to see the Titans lose, but you were kind of hoping that maybe you could see a coaching change here. Yeah. Um, and maybe see a little bit more of a exotic kind of right. non smash mouth of, of, yeah. <laughs> of a cornucopia of different plays and usages and maybe going a little faster and using Mariota. Right. And, you know, obviously you'll get Derrick Henry a little more involved moving forward. Um, so who looked awesome in that playoff game. Um, I'm with you with the coaching change. I don't necessarily like the play calling. Uh, I don't think that they're utilizing the, those skill position players as much as they could. If you just look at the numbers, like you could be really down on Marcus Mariota and you could be down on Corey Davis because he had a... I think it's a huge buy low opportunity for Mariota. Absolutely. And Corey Davis. Yeah, cause sure. His value can can only go up. I mean, he, he, he struggled with health and then he finally kind of picked it up and you see a nice game in week 16 versus the Rams. He had not, uh, six catches for 91 yards. Yeah, I, I, I thought that tape looked pretty solid he was yeah. all over the place doing kind of what you saw in week one right and uh capped that, it that, off that was that was right. a solid showing because right. you could be pretty down on him because he never like i played Corey davis in my lineup for weeks expecting this blow up week to happen and it just never happened and like i, I couldn't play him week 16 yeah, the I end benched of the season, him. you had some injuries and you were yeah right well yeah i mean in the 12 man dynasty you know, your your Corey Davis, your your high rookie picks, you're probably wanting to you know, when injuries start hitting and Allen Ro- had Allen Robinson season, go down yeah. and, and you know, people Amari are banged Cooper, up not playing, not playing well, well and missing and games missing as game, well. You know, so yeah, I needed some Corey Davis and I played him a few weeks and you know I Tevin Coleman was missing time here and there for you. Too, yeah, so. yeah. And I mean I made it I made it to the championship game. Yeah. And I I, t- I plugged Tevin Coleman that week instead of Corey Davis and they got me about the same points. Um uh, I couldn't. I couldn't. See, but it was great to see Corey Davis have that game. Yeah. And, it, and and maybe had he not had that game, it'd be an even more by low uh, time here for you right now. But as far as Mariota goes, like it's absolutely by low because as bad as it seemed like it was, he still was putting his team in position to win right. the game at the end of the game. And the defense was fantastic. They were great against the run. They started off real poor against the pass, but they tightened that down. No pun intended. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, Marcus will have his bad spots in the games, but he, he will typically, if, if there's a chance to win the game, I, I you know, he's been pretty good. Obviously, it was it was pretty lucky on this last go around with the with the batted ball back to himself and scoring. But I mean, threw a touchdown pass to himself. But that is crazy. It's crazy. And that, but I mean, he's just a team guy. He's just, and and the effort that he's going to put forward and, and just springing the block to, to spring that run at the, that's that I think just really encapsulates the kind of guy he was. And they say there isn't a player that's ever played with Marcus Mariota who won't go to bat for him and just say how he's the best teammate ever. And, and, you know, just a really good guy and, and all those kind of things. And, you know, some of that doesn't account for anything, but I think he's got all the tools necessary to make Corey Davis a really good player and they can grow and learn together. And there's a, there's a talented roster all throughout the Titans organization right now. Yep. So it's something to be really excited about. From the about. offensive line to the running right. game to the defense. And it's kind of been like, well, last year you, you thought it was going to make us, or two years ago you thought, and then this year you thought that, oh, you know, you saw a little bit of a step forward and they were exotic smash mouth in it and running, running the crap out of the ball through that offensive line. And it started off a little shaky offensive line wise, but I think they tightened up a little bit. Um, so nothing to be discouraged about in the Titans organization, except for maybe the coach coming back. Right. So. Yeah. And I mean, Corey Davis, he, he, he's, he has name cachet, you know, sure, he that, was probably the consensus one, one pick last year Yeah, or on one, Twitter. Two, yeah. He was definitely the Twitter one, one pick. Right. I don't know that I ever saw a draft where Leonard Fournette didn't go one right overall, but there's a ton of hate on him out there. But like Corey Davis was probably at two. I actually got him at one, four. Yeah. In our twelve man dynasty league that we all Got three play in together, in front of him. and yep, Mixon went right in front of him, and I was sitting there, and I could have taken Christian McCaffrey or Corey Davis, and you know, I from a points wise, I, I probably could have used, I probably, I might have won a championship with Corey with uh, Christian McCaffrey, the guy who took Christian McCaffrey won the championship. Oh I, yeah, I lost to Christian McCaffrey. But he also did have Gurley, so. But he had Gurley. Yeah, I got Todd Gurley. He had that resistance. I had Todd. I got Todd Gurley in Week 16. I'm sure plenty of people did. So I'm not. I'm not mad at him. I. I looking back at it now, would I change my pick? I. I, I probably would, but I'm still completely happy to have Corey yeah. Davis on my team, a top 20 guy who can, who has the ability to push his way up into the top 10, up into the top five, right. even. Which He's is, a guy that can escalate, and that's what that's what we're looking for. And right. even if he doesn't push himself up into there, exactly. he can still sustain this area right. type value 
And so it's kind of win-win. Here. Why I'm really I kind of let it off with alluding to that, and that's kind of why I'm pretty comfortable with him, no problem. And and he could easily just through next year could be ten spots ahead of where he is right now. Right. So easily. All right. Let's go to break. We'll be back and round out this top twenty uh, wide receiver rankings. <laughs> 